Hi everyone, it's Linda Schmidt with Stampin' with the Hounds. Um, today I've got um, a really fun technique um, that I actually learned about 20 years ago when I first became a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, it's called the Rediform technique. And what it is, is you're basically masking off different segments on your card and then kind of doing like a little bit of a collage um, stamping with some like line image um, type stamps. And I'm going to change it up a little bit today because I'm actually adding another technique to it, which is making a kind of smooched background, almost like that marbled um, look to it. So we're going to do the background first. And then we'll do the retiform technique, which is the sponging and stamping. But I wanted to show you some samples that I've done without this uh, marbled background, basically. So these, um, I did a class on this uh, last night with some of my uh, my friends and uh, stampers. I, and this is the one that I had demoed last night. And on this one, I actually, when I did the, the technique, I got done stamping and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna run it through the seashell embossing powder or folder. And so I thought it kind of just popped it up just a little bit with it. So this uses the Friends Are Like Seashells uh, bundle. And so I basically did, you know, some different colors. Um, I did like flirty flamingos, uh, so saffron, um, Sahara, Sahara sand, and then the retiring um, color, in color uh, seaside spray on that one. So that was that. And then this one uses a uh, field journal. So this is kind of like the original technique that I learned 20 years ago. You're stamping on a, like a crumb cake, and then you're putting all of your images in one color, and then sponging with multiple um, inks on that one. And then here's another one I did with the, um, Oh my gosh, Dandelion Wishes. <laughs> it's a, a new set um, that's in the mini catalog and then it's actually carrying over to our 21-22 annual catalog, so that's nice. And on this one, I left a little bit of white space in between, so it kind of gives you a little bit of those border um, throughout that one. And this one I just did Balmy Blue and So Saffron and then a little bit of uh, Sea Foam, or no, Soft Seas Foam, <laughs> the green um, for that. And then this one uses the um, Dragonfly Wishes. Um, and on this one, I decided after, originally I just had it stamped, the Dragonfly straight on there, but I thought it needed to be popped up. And so I added one more uh, Dragonfly with a dimensional and it just gives it a little bit more of a pop. And then I added some sequins. And then I also did a little bit of the uh, gilded leafing um, in the background with some tear and tape uh, to get that effect on there. And then my final one um, uses Dress to Impress. And so this one I did one of our new in colors. It's called Polished Pink. Um, this is totally my sister's color. It's bright pink. It's not my color, but um, I thought, you know, it'd be a fun card to send to her because she uh, sells Mary Kay. So anyway, Polished Pink. And then I did uh, the Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. And then again, the, um, why am I always forgetting this green? It's Sea Foam. It's very pale, soft sea foam, <laughs> but it's a really light green. And then I did granny apple green um, for on top of it. And then again, that polished pink uh, for there. So that's kind of a fun one. And then a little bit of rhinestones just to kind of pop it up and make it. And this one I did add a little bit of ribbon too, just to dress it up. So you can keep it um, simple where you don't have you know any ribbon or anything um, I like to add a little bit of either twine or some dimension to mine when I do it so we're gonna get started so this is the one we're gonna do today so again I'm kind of doing two techniques into one I've got the retiform technique plus we're gonna do this kind of I guess I don't know what to call it it's like marbled background maybe um, like a polished stone version um, but it's basically using ink refills and rubbing alcohol and some glossy cardstock. So I have, it's actually, it's a, um, a silicone mat um, that has a little bit of edgings. This is actually from, it's not a Stampin' Up! product. It is actually from um, Waffle Flower and it's the mini media mat. Um, it's heat non-stick, it's waterproof, it's heat resistant, and it's not staining. And it's a little bit bigger than our six by six silicone mat. Um, 
but that would work too if you have that on hand. I've also seen people use um, our Stamparatus, like the uh, the plastic arm, and then they cover it with press and seal. So that works as well too. But what you need, um, again, is you can use your a Stampin' Up! silicone mat, and then you wanna have some glossy cardstock. And then you'll want to choose two to three um, kind of coordinating ink refills. And so I'm using uh, Petal Pink, Cinnamon Cider, which is a uh, in color that is from uh, 2020 to 2022. And then the retiring um, in color Terracotta Tile. Um, so this will be only be available till uh, May 4th. But I figure I've got a whole bottle. I might as well start using it up. And then your glossy cardstock. And this one, because my card has got uh, some multiple layerings, this white glossy cardstock is three and three quarters by five inches. So what you want to do first is apply your ink refills to your silicone mat. So I'm going to do the petal pink. I've got about four colors. And then I'm going to do the cinnamon cider on the bottom. And I'm only going to do um, a three of those. And then the terracotta tile, I'm only going to do a couple because this is a really, really dark color. So the darker the color, the less drops I would um, recommend. And then I took my uh, Stampin' Spritz. Actually, I'm going to actually kind of refill this. And I've marked it so that I always know that this one has rubbing alcohol in it. I just put some washi tape on it. And I'm just going to fill this up with rubbing alcohol. And then we're just going to spritz the rubbing alcohol so that our inks start to blend. And then I take a aqua painter and I'm going to start with my lighter color and I'm just going to kind of blend these together and then just wipe off some of the excess and then do my next color and then wipe off the excess. This is just a baby wipe that I've got. And then my final color, and then wipe off the excess. And then you're gonna lay your glossy cardstock and you want the glossy side face down. So now you're just gonna press this down and smooch, and you can kind of wiggle your cardstock a little bit because it's glossy, so it's gonna move a little bit. And then pick up and now you've got this like kind of fun background. And then you'll need to set this aside to dry. If there's a spot that like say you've missed, you can always press it back in to your cards or into the ink refills and fill it in. So I'm just gonna set this aside to dry. And because since I have a lot of ink on here, I'm gonna go ahead and do um, one more. I've got to cut a piece here, hold on. So again, I've got enough ink on here. I'm just going to take another piece of cardstock and just kind of smooch around. And that one didn't get quite as much, so we'll put a little bit more down here. So every time you do this, you're going to get a different effect. So each one is going to be a little bit different. So here I've got some that where my color kind of didn't really blend. So I'm just going to tap it back in there. Give it a little. And you can always go back if it's starting to dry. Spritz it again with that rubbing alcohol. And there we go. Like so. And I got a little bit of something was on my mat. There we go. Cool. And so I'll just set those aside to dry. And then all you need to do with your silicone mat is you can just take um, that baby wipe. You can take a paper towel and then just wipe off that excess ink off of it. 
and then I've got this is my little trusty handy dandy little Norwex uh, <laughs> travel in viral cloth but um, I always keep one down here from in my stamp room because it tends to work pretty well and it, the ink and stuff washes out of it and again I don't use this um, for anything else it's just for my stamping all right and it's good to clean your hands off too okay so then we're done with that part so these are some of the ones that I had done earlier because I want these to dry. Um, this is still a little wet. You can actually kind of heat set it um, if you want. I really do like how this one turned out. So I'm thinking maybe if that, well that did dry pretty quick. So maybe I will, that's still a little wet on the edges. So we'll let, we'll continue to let that dry. So I'm gonna pick up one of the ones that I had done earlier. And I've got a couple different ones, and I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do this one. And I also wanted to show you. Um, so after it had dried, I actually took, and this is on the Clarence rack right now, the Champagne uh, All Purpose Ink. It's a little uh, shimmer paint. This stuff I love, and it's on Clarence for 480. So stock up on this because this is what I always use for my shimmer spray, which is rubbing alcohol and um, a little bit of the shimmer paint in there. And this is what I always kind of spritz my cards with. So if you don't have the shimmer paint, it's a must have. So what I did on here is I just put a little bit of the shimmer paint on a uh, Stampin' Sponge, and then I just dabbed um, and pounced on there. So I got that little bit of a uh, glimmer on there um, on that too. So I thought that would be kind of fun to do for something. But we're gonna start with this one. And so for the red to form uh, technique part, the main thing you want to do first is stamp your focal point. So I'm going to use, this is the Retiring Set Game On. Um, it's a great masculine set. Um, my boyfriend loves to play uh, chess and uh, does poker and stuff. And so this was like a fun set that I've, I've done a lot of cards uh, for him. Um, plus, like I said, it's just, a, it's just a fun kind of masculine set. So I was kind of bummed that it's retiring, but got to make room for new stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chess piece and because we're stamping on glossy, I like to use the stays on. Um, you can use the classic inks too, but um, I wanted my main focal point uh, to kind of stand out a little bit. So I'm going to stamp this with the saddle brown stays on. And we're just going to stamp this right in the center. And because you're stamping on glossy, you want to be careful that you don't smear. So that's going to take just a little bit just to dry. You can kind of see it's a little wet. So I'm just going to set that aside just for a minute here while it's drying. And I'll just clean my stamp with my Stampin' Chamois. We may just give that a quick shout on there. Let me just pick off some of that excess ink. And that should be good. Okay. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to have some post-it notes. Um, because I have... I'm doing like a long line that I'm going to mask off. I actually take some of my grid paper and I just cut them into strips. Um, and then on this part, basically what you're thinking of is you want to think of that spotlight. So I'm starting with, I'm going to mask my center part. And I want to leave room so that I have some space to stamp in my four corners um, on there. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now take a coordinating color. So I'm gonna do the terracotta tile and I'm going to sponge and you can either use the um, daubers or you can use um, our stampin' uh, our blending brushes. Um, these work as well. I actually did um, because I was on the glossy. Um, I was thinking the tear the the daubers were a little bit easier since it's already inked up. I didn't want to have to reclean my <laughs> my blending brush, so I'm just going to use my daubers. And so you want a very important. You're going to start on the copy paper, and in a swirling motion, go from the copy paper onto your cardstock. 
kind of just keeping that swirling motion, working from the copy paper onto your glossy cardstock. So I'm working away from my spotlight. Then you do the same thing. So I'm going to flip my card upside down. And I want my other spotlight going this way. So again, I'm going to put my, my copy paper down. And oh, you can hear my greyhounds in the background. It's like 4 o'clock. It's like their dinner time. <laughs> All right. And then I'm just going to, again, starting from the copy paper onto the grid or onto the glossy. And then just kind of swirling and sponging. So now I have my spotlight. Then you do the same thing. Now you want to do your bottom part. So again, I'm covering up and I'm going to put it at an angle. And I'm working off of my copy paper onto the glossy. So because I want my ink to be going away from my focal point right now. Okay, and then again, flip it upside, right side up now. And then now we're going to, so this was going, this uh, going kind of down at an angle. Now I want this last one to go up at an angle. So I want to place that down again. And then working from, again, that copy paper onto your glossy cardstock in a swirling motion. Okay, so now you've got all of your little grids made. Now you can go and do another color. Um, and when you do another color, what you would do is you would now go this way and do the other color on top so that you would have one color here and then another color here. And that's kind of what I did on my, what would be the best one to show you? On my dragonfly you can see I did the green going one way and then my yellow the crushed curry was going another way uh, but um, for this one I was just gonna stick with just the terracotta tile so now the next step is masking and this is where you need some post-it notes now you're going to mask and you're gonna stamp each of these sections so I'm gonna start with my we're done with those. So I'm going to do my corners. And this is the part where, you know, there's no rules on um, how you do this stamping part. But I tend to like to keep some sort of pattern. So, for example, I keep my chessboard pieces all in the four corners. And then I did my other two colors. These are the dice. I did those in the same color and then they're opposite of each other. And then I did these ones, I did two different stamps, but I kept the same color um, just so that's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So I'm going to do my chessboard and I'm going to stamp that in the, uh, the stays on the saddle brown again. So I'm just going to do one of those in each corner. So you're just masking off each section. stamping and again kind of stamp off your paper you know so that you're kind of getting that collage look and then we'll do this other corner and again kind of stamp at an angle kind of going off the copy paper like I did there or off the glossy paper. And then my final one will be in this corner. So now I've got my four corners stamped. And since this is stays on, I want to make sure I 
clean off that stamp because that's a permanent ink. And close that up. And always keep that little plastic tray um, or pl plastic covering on your stays on. It helps so that your ink pad doesn't dry out. And then I'm going to do the terracotta tile. And for this one, I'm going to um, do the cards and the little club image. So now this one, because it's a little bit longer, I may need a little bit more post-it notes to mask it off. Those are all masked, and now I'm going to ink up my cards in the terracotta tile. And so again, since we're stamping on glossy, just be careful that you don't um, slide around when you stamp. So I'm just going to press down and then gently lift up, and I'm going to re-ink because I can fit another set of cards on here. So we'll just kind of put them at an angle like that. And then I'll mask up my top part here. And I'm going to do my little, because this is smaller, so now I'm going to pick my little club. And I'm just going to stamp these multiple times, kind of rotating my stamp so it's not always in the same position. Stamping off the paper so you kind of get that collage look. And now I just have my um, left and right side. So again, I'm going to mask this section and the top part and the bottom part. And then on this one, I'm going to do the petal pink. And I will do the dice. And I'm going to do the dice on both sides. So I'm not switching up my stamps. I'm just going to keep with the roll the dice all in petal pink. So again, kind of stamping at an angle, rotating it so I'm not always stamping in the same position. To get that random collage look. And then I might do one more. There. And then the final section is over here, so we'll mask that part. This one and that one. So this got a little dark, so we'll see how the petal pink shows up. Not too bad. And you can also, like I said before, um, you can do the same color for all of your stamping, and then you can mix up your sponging um, with ink colors. So those are all done. So now you've got that retiform technique with the kind of marbled, kind of smooch um, background with your ink refills and rubbing alcohol. So super fun. And then to finish this card off, I am just going to take a strip of um, terracotta tile cardstock, and this is one of my new fate. Uh, this is a new punch that's in the mini catalog, and then it carried over to the to the main catalog. But it is the um, treasured tags, and you basically get six different tag um, sizes and images. So. The um, depending on your size, so I, you can put in a half inch, a three quarter inch, or a one inch strip of paper, and depending on what size it is, is what image you're going to get. So this one is a one inch strip, and I'm doing um, this design. So you're sliding it in, and if your paper doesn't fit, or if you're having problems, um, it might not be the right size. So then just trim that, and you want to make sure it's at the back of the punch. So you slide it in, and I'm not quite up there. Hold on. I might need to just trim this just a titch. I think I'm a little too wide.
bear with me. slides in and then you want to make sure it goes all the way to the back of the punch so it doesn't go any farther and then you'll just press down and now you've got that fun tag so then what I did next is I just took my because I'm embossing this um, and I did uh, some retiring uh, vanilla um, embossing powder you can use white as well, but I'm gonna take my embossing buddy just to get rid of the static electricity. And then I will, this one I did, you know what, I think I'm gonna switch this one up for my saying because I think I'm gonna make this one a birthday card. Cause I know with my coworkers, I've got, I've gotta have some masculine birthday cards made up. So we'll do, hope your day is full of fun and games. And then I will do from the other retiring one, here's a card. Um, this is another fun, and I'm so bummed this is retiring because uh, it's got an, uh, some really great sayings in it um, on there. But that one is retiring at the end of um, uh, uh, May 4th. It'll be retired. And so I'm going to do the happy birthday. And I'm ink this in Versamark. sure I'm stamping straight always the fun part and then I'm gonna add my embossing powder that looks good we'll give it a quick shot with the embossing tool And then all I do is I just put a little bit of adhesive because I'm just going to trim off the end. So I'm just going to position this where I want. Make sure I'm straight here. And we'll go right about there. And then I will just cut this off. So, and then I'm going to layer this onto a quarter sheet of very vanilla or basic vanilla. I always forget now what we're calling it. I'm going to use my multi purpose glue. I'll layer this onto the vanilla. like just to take a little squeegee <laughs> that I have just to press make sure that's all on there good and then my base is one of our uh, in colors uh, cinnamon cider this is a great fun color um, it coordinates with a lot of different um, other colors that we have so I'm going to then again put adhesive on the back of this And then layer this onto my cinnamon cider card. And then I always like to complete the inside of my card. So I've got another quarter sheet of vanilla. And so I'm going to do, I think I'm gonna do my cards instead. I'm gonna stamp this in petal pink. And I'll just kind of put that there. And then my saying, I'm going to do in the terracotta tile. And this was the hope your day is um, all fun and games. And I'll just stamp that on top of it. And then again, layer this. So this all on the inside of the card. 
I always like to have a neutral um, card base on the inside of my cards just to kind of double layer it. And then I always like to stamp on the back of my card too with the image that coordinates with it and then, then I'll sign my name on the back. And then no card is complete, not complete, without a little bit of bling. And so we're going to use, I lost my, oh, here it is, my pick tool. I'm going to do um, some of these little gems. This is in the terracotta tile, so I'll just pop that right there just to coordinate and finish the card off. And there it is. There is the fun retiform technique um, combined with the um, kind of blended smooch uh, alcohol ink refill um, background. So thanks for watching, and I hope to uh, stamp with you again soon. Have a good day. Bye.